So welcome to the first episode of the Seminars for Health podcast, the show where we interview industry professionals and get their takes on what needs improving. I'm Dominic, and today we're talking about business for massage therapists with Lisa Gosen and Linda Hope. Now it's time to welcome Linda Hope and Lisa Gosen to the show. So Linda is the owner, co-founder, and CEO of Seminars for Health. Linda has a bachelor in kinesiology from the University of Calgary, a three-year diploma in physiotherapy from Cégep FX Galneau in Quebec, and a massage therapy diploma from Mount Royal University. Linda brings an interesting perspective from working as a healthcare provider and running a solid continuing education company. Hi, Linda, and welcome to the show. Thanks for taking the time to be here today. Thanks for having me. And Lisa, Lisa owns Inner Balance Spa in Calgary and is here to share her expertise in conducting a successful massage therapy business. Lisa has a Bachelor's of Science from the University of Calgary. She's a registered massage therapist and a certified holistic nutritional consultant. Hi, Lisa. Thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. So, Linda, tell us a bit about how you and Lisa got to meet each other. Lisa and I uh, started working together, I believe it was in 1995, <laughs> at Rocky Mountain Academy. You remember that? I do. So I was teaching a musculoskeletal advanced course, and I believe you were teaching an hydro therapy course yep. uh, for, for the school. So Lisa and I had a similar path. And little did we know that 27 years we'll be sitting here in my living room <laughs> doing this podcast. So we did together many, many um, uh, projects and are solid in this, uh, in this, in this what? <laughs> Endeavor? <laughs> Endeavor. Yes, yes. Endeavor. So it sounds like you have quite the history together. Lisa, I wanted to pick your brain today about running a massage therapy business. You have had success and I think your knowledge would be extremely valuable to massage therapists running a clinic or a spa, or even massage therapists running a business from their home. And Linda, you have experience running a continuing education company, and I hope you can chime in with some of your experiences as well. So I had a, a few questions that I wanted to throw at the two of you. Uh, and I want to start with a big one. So what do you think your biggest challenge was when you started your business? My biggest challenge was establishing a, a really cohesive team. You know, you really do need a, a group of like-minded therapists who are really enthusiastic, have a spark, want to learn, and really love what they do. It's really the most important part of a massage therapy business. We, we're, we're, we're a people business. We're a service business. We we see people every day and it's really important to to really understand that and if the team doesn't understand that then it, it's um it makes it more dif difficult to run a very successful practice yeah like they say teamwork makes the dream work <laughs> yeah, totally. linda did you have anything you wanted to add to that i cannot agree more like lisa is a business owner uh, running a clinic i am a uh, continuing education business owner, the challenges are very similar, like having the right faculty, the right support staff, the right marketing team makes the world of a difference. Mm -hmm. I think part of the reason that Seminars for Health is known for quality courses is because of the people that we gather. Mm -hmm. And they really motivate you and, and um, kind of uplift you too. You know, I think, you know, in our profession, we're, we tend to work up by ourselves with our clients and, you know, in the massage therapy world, in like a dim room by yourself. And I think burnout is a, is a problem. And so I think having, having kind of a, a team or, or being able to talk to other therapists, even if you're just in a private practice, is really key. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so where do you think is the main area where massage therapy businesses fail? I think it's not upgrading skills and keeping current in the industry. Um, things are changing very quickly in our industry and certainly over the last 20 years I've, I've noticed huge changes just with social media now and um, trendy courses and new things and all the different um, skills that we need to have. Um, clients are very savvy. They, they 
go for massage regularly. They, they hear things, they want to try things. And if you're not really keeping up with some of those trends, I guess you could say, um, I think that is, um, going to be a problem for businesses in the future. If I can add like clients, Lisa said the clients are more aware and they expect more. They mm -hmm. really expect more. Like uh, they often have to choose between different healthcare professionals to get their, their pain or their musculoskeletal tension resolved. So not that we're competing against each other, but in a way we are. And, 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 and why are we competing is because we have, we have the skill set to help those clients dealing with uh, musculoskeletal injuries, uh, uh, joint problems and so on. So for that reason, uh, we can't fail them and we need to upgrade and know how to help uh, feel better. Absolutely. Yeah, so it sounds like staying up to date is a big, uh, very important for massage therapists. Yes. And not, and not just massage therapists, all professions. If you don't yes. keep up, I think you're in trouble. Yes. For sure. And then what are your thoughts on massage therapists providing retail services? I think it's a great idea. You know, massage therapists, we're really stuck with um, our kind of physical... Uh, manual therapy and that's sort of our only way to make money so if you want to make a little bit more money and we all do um, you have to work harder you have to work longer you have to see more clients um, you have to try to get more clients and so I think you know being able to sell some retail is a really great way to augment your your income and it actually um, it, it's not as difficult as you might think and there's so many beautiful tools out there depending on what you're doing if you're working in a spa if you're working in a physio clinic a chiropractic clinic and what your focus is um, there's there's kind of a retail product for 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 everything so it's actually not a really difficult thing to implement into your practice that's excellent and then by offering retail services do you think this takes away from the customer experience when someone comes in to get a massage? No, it Not definitely adds. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, it adds. Um, being able to su suggest a product to a client that can really improve treatment outcomes really sets you up as looking like a specialist. Um, it, it makes, it, it kind of uplifts or or really extends the therapy experience for the client. And it also um, can um, give them a higher level of service as well. And they, they, you are the expert, and then they expect you to provide expertise beyond massage therapy. So the retail is a nice way to add to what uh, they're receiving in your clinic. Yes, it really increases loyalty. And then, so the two of you both went to school to become massage therapists. You both have your diplomas. And what are some of the largest misconceptions that you had or that people have coming out of school nowadays have? Where to start? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, I feel that uh, there's a little bit of misled um, without pointing fingers here, but I feel like a lot of massage therapists um, think that it will be easier or, uh, or easy um, because they're now trained and they now can start earning a, a good um, income. What do you think, Lisa? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, and this goes for actually every profession, not just massage therapy. But I think I think when you come out of school, you kind of think that, okay, this is it. I've got my training and I'm just going to start making money and it's going to be amazing. And, and that can be true, but it's kind of a long road. You, you still need to learn how to really handle your clients in a professional manner. And if you're too casual with people or you think that if you just supply good service, that's going to be enough, but it actually isn't. Everybody expects good service these days, but having, being able to like really 
bring your clients back and really have that client loyalty. It requires a lot more training and a lot more experience. And building a business takes time. It, it, it isn't um, a quick thing. And even if you're just, if you're working for someone else, if you're employed, you still have to bring your clients back. You cannot expect that employer to be feeding you with new clients every day. That's a misconception. Okay. Agreed? Yes, you, you really get me thinking in many directions here. Mm -hmm. And um, and when you first finish your great accomplishment of doing a two-year diploma in massage therapy, you, you enter a pool in the profession that not only have graduates, but have people with different level of expertise, bringing different uh, modalities. And then you... You want it or you don't, you're, you're, you're competing exactly. and you're competing for the same clients. Mm -hmm. So what can you do to differentiate yourself? I'm not trying to create fear here, but I'm just speaking about the reality of what people think when they come out. They, they think it's going to be easy. It's fun. It's a great profession, but you need to put some efforts in, in distinguishing yourself and what, what can you do to keep up with the pace out there with the peers, uh, with your peers that are doing massage therapy. Yes. So it sounds like once you're done school, you're far from done learning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to put it, yeah, for sure. Exactly. It's just the yes. beginning. Yeah, and I think in the schools, we don't quite get enough of um, the education about the, the business aspect, right? And it doesn't matter if you own a business or you're working for someone else, you, the business of massage therapy is still a business. It's still all about increasing clientele and bringing those clients back. And that is something that takes time to learn and needs to be learned for sure. I call that soft skills that cannot be yes. learned in school. Mm -hmm. And then what a better way to, to work in a clinic, uh, treating clients, and, uh, and and even better if you're surrounded by other great therapists who are part of a clinic that believe in the culture yes. uh, that a clinic can um, can add to the service. And the more coaching and collaboration and connection that you can form with other therapists, um, the better for you. And so in this course, we're really hoping to kind of um, have a lot of discussion, kind of what our challenges are, what the future holds for us. There's lots of things going to happen in the next couple of years, potentially with the economy. We're just coming out of COVID. There's a lot of um, competition now, than, more competition than there ever has been before. And so what are some of the challenges that we're facing and how are we as professional massage therapists going to um, really come out of that in a, in a good way? Um, solid way. Yeah, thanks for all those answers. As Lisa teased it all already, uh, we're excited to announce that we're developing a new business course for massage therapists. So Linda and Lisa, tell us a bit about the course. What can students expect to learn and how will this push their massage therapy business to become more successful? You want to start, Lisa? Yes, so this course um, is going to really focus on client retention. So client retention isn't um, a simple thing. There's actually a lot of uh, different moving parts with client retention. So we're going to be talking a lot about how to talk to your clients, what the, your space should look like, how you need to refresh your skills, how you need to refresh your space, how you need to um, present yourself as a as a professional um, in your field how to present yourself as an expert in your field how to differentiate yourself um, just some of those skills that just really hone in on on um, just making you a little bit more successful a little bit more um, giving you a bit more of edge over some of the competition so standing out from the crowd. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Linda, what aspect of the course are you going to be teaching? So I will be covering the charting aspect of uh, the course. Charting is, is essential. It has to be done after every single massage. But charting 
from her point of view as massage therapist can add um, a different angle so we beside assessing and setting short-term and long-term goals uh, and, and, and establishing a treatment plan we could also be more broad so we we can be part of what is their health goals in general and making sure that we are connecting with the client at that level so if the client comes to see us beyond that hip pain or that neck tension but you feel like they're supported as an individual uh, I, I think we we have an angle that will retain your client yes. and makes us stand out from other clinics so that is part of charting it is it's a really important part like you you know you can you can find out what a kind of what the holistic view of that person is and and you can look at that and you can actually market some of the other skills that you have to that client yeah absolutely right rather than just kind of sticking with one thing all the time it's like you know what next time because you're having you know those really bad um, headaches I think we should look you know a little bit more closely at your jaw and I really have this new technique that, that I've uh, that I've just learned and I think we should do that or I just learned how to do cran craniosacral therapy and I think that is the road, road that we should take with you um, or you might have a product that that will kind of work for them like there's just so many things that you can do for that for that one um, problem that they came in for and sometimes that problem actually leads to another a whole another um, um, I don't know skill set or yeah. or something that you can do mm -hmm. for that client and the client your clients don't necessarily know what you know and what you can offer yes and then it is your responsibility as a massage therapist to inform them of what they potentially miss out yes so that is some of the things that this course will be covering sure. bringing the client back again and again for for all of the other things that you offer mm -hmm. so it sounds like charting is really essential to having clients return keeping clients in your clinic yes you, you don't think of charting this way but yeah it is part of it so that's awesome so that's all the questions I had for the two of you today. Is there anything else you wanted to add about regarding the course or anything that you'd like to share with the audience? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm really looking forward to the course. I think, I think we're going to have lots of um, great discussions and, um, you know, we're really looking at it as, as kind of a coaching opportunity. And um, I, I think it's going to be a very fun dynamic course we are really looking forward to meet you bring bring on your challenges let's create a discussion around that uh, there's a there's so much um, angles that um, can be learned from the challenges you have and Lisa I mean she she's been running this clinic for how many years now Lisa? 19 years 19 years my god and I have seminars all for 11 years. So running businesses is is what we do. Yes. And then we're we, we want to we want to share that information with you. Like we care we care about this profession for sure. Uh, and then we 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 we're looking forward to have you in the classroom. Excellent. Sounds like there's quite a bit of experience between the two of you. So I think this course will be extremely valuable to massage therapists working mobile, working from a clinic, or wanting to work from home. And I see great value for the front end staff and clinic owners looking for ways to attract and retain their clientele. So Lisa, you have experience running a multidisciplinary clinic, offering spa and clinical treatments with various modalities. Plus you've been so successful doing this for many years. And Linda's experience leading seminars for health, a leader in continuing education. The two of you will bring a wealth of knowledge in this course that will, without a doubt, motivate massage therapists to guide them to a successful career. So again, we've developed our new business course, Client Retention Strategies, scheduled to run on November 2nd from 9 a.m. to 12.30 in Calgary. Check out our website, seminarsforhealth.ca, for all future course dates. So now you can join us, sign up for a course, and learn about everything that made Linda and Lisa successful business owners. Hopefully you can apply all of those into your business and push your business to the next level. 
I'd like to thank Linda and Lisa once again for joining me today and have a wonderful day. This is Dominic with the Seminars for Health podcast on client retention strategies.